Nearly four months ago, two lunatics set out to see if they could start a garden. They had zero gardening skills and no clue what they were getting themselves into, but they had the unbridled passion and determination to get the job done. They properly messed everything up, so please don't use this as a guide. Sit back, relax, and kindly enjoy this footage as they stumble their way through the first steps of this adventure we call gardening. So, shall I try my hand at gardening? Welcome to Crocs in the Garden. I'm Brian. <laughs> and I'm Jessica. Well, it's not exactly a garden yet. This is uh, sort of the side yard for my parents' house here, but you guys may remember when we were talking about moving that I was super excited to get started doing a garden. I know it's really late in the season, but I figured I would give uh, a go at actually trying to plant and grow some of my own food. So we are actually following the square foot gardening method. I actually did a webinar on it through Plant Peer Communities a while back. And if you don't know what square foot gardening is, check out their website. I'll put some links below in the description below but um we are actually doing their course right now but we haven't quite started it yet and it's really late in the season like brian said so we really need to get this garden going so we're going to kind of do the course as we're putting the garden together and all this stuff so we really don't know what we're doing we don't want to know what's going to happen we're not good at making things grow or stay alive or any of that kind of stuff but we're just this is all trial and error yeah but first things first we got to go buy some stuff our first stop was at a local nursery where we picked up a bunch of plants. Now, in hindsight, I think we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. We were just super pumped up and excited to grow stuff. And so we were like, look, these things are already growing. We, we can put them into our garden and it'll be great. But we probably should have built the garden and got the logistics going a little bit better before that. But you know, we live and learn. So at this store that we went to, they actually had a bunch of buy one, get one free. The pickings were a little slim at this point, because again, we're in July here and people have already, their gardens are already booming. So there's places actually, we ended up getting some plants from the local farmer's market. They were just giving them away for free at this point in the season, but we really tried hard to pick ones that we thought would do super well. And we were super excited. Next up, we had to go to what would become our home away from home, Home Depot. The first thing that I wanted to get were castle stones. Now, castle stones are essentially just like Lego bricks that are made out of concrete. And I saw these online, thought they looked really cool. And I was like, yes, I want those for my garden. Now, these are not a part of the official square foot gardening manual or guide. This is purely just my thing that I wanted to do for aesthetic sake. And in hindsight, I would not buy these again, just because we hadn't measured anything, we hadn't figured anything out yet, and it just turned out to be a little bit more of a hassle than what I wanted to have. After that, it was time to get some wood. So the kind of wood that we were looking for was untreated wood. And according to the Square Foot Gardening guidebook, we should use cedar because cedar does not rot in the elements as quickly as other wood does. We ended up getting some two by six by eights and basically that was all we needed for that. But after what felt like five hours in Home Depot, it actually was five hours, we went outside and we saw that they had an amazing collection of some wonderful herbs and peppers and other stuff. And they just looked so good that we ended up having to buy several of those too. Mmm, rosemary. But once we had all of that, it was time to go back home. All right, so as you can see behind me, we've got plenty of plants to work with and we've got some that already started growing so we can hopefully catch up on how far behind we are in this process. Um, I am going to put on some sunscreen, which this actually has sunscreen and bug repellent. This is my favorite to use, I love it. And then also some sunscreen for my face because I get super burnt. I go from pale to like crispy burnt in like two seconds and mosquitoes love to snack on me. They don't bite Brian, they only bite me. 
Um, so I'm going to go do that and then I'm going to go check and see what Brian's doing out in the garden. As you can see here, Brian was hard at work hauling all those supplies down to where we would build the garden. Shout out to my father for letting us use his fancy dancy wheelbarrow. Now keep in mind, this was July in St. Louis, and if you know anything about St. Louis, it's freaking hot in July. And for some reason we decided to do this during midday when the sun was beaming down on us, so that was super fun, but we were so excited to get our little garden going and fit all the little pieces together. They just lock together super easy. And we, it took us like five minutes to set it up. And we were just like, this is going to be a breeze. Ah, there's nothing like a man in his wood. Smell that cedar. So you will notice that throughout this process, we go back and redo a bunch of different things. This is one of those things. I originally wanted the box to be just your standard four by four box, and I wanted it to be 12 inches tall to have a really deep bed. This turned out to be not the thing that we decided to do, but more on that later. So one of my biggest concerns were all the critters that live around my parents' house. So we ended up buying some hardware cloth to line the bottom to stop anything from going up and to use it as fencing to stop anything from getting in on the outside. All right, so Brian just injured me. So if you notice a little bruising right here, here, um, he had a little issue with his little wire fence thingy that he's building over here. We're not building people. We're not outdoorsy people. We don't know what we're doing. So let me show you what he did and maybe we can help you avoid it yourself. So remember when this little wire thing was all tightly bound up like this? Well, Brian cut it and little did we know it was going to explode open and the force from it actually like knocked my glasses off and hit me. All right, so this is the point where some red flags started appearing. We went to go measure out the hardware cloth, which as you can see is not cloth. It's, that's really confusing. It's actually like metal wire fencing kind of stuff. We went to measure it against the wood, but our box was no longer four by four because of the castle stone. So the box was actually a little bit larger than four by four. So all the measurements for everything else we bought were kind of off. We didn't really take this into account how much extra space the castle stone would, would add in the corners there, um, but we pressed forward anyway and we, you can see we're stapling this to the top of the thing and then we will flip it eventually, you'll see, but, and it will line the bottom, but also Brian had this staple gun that his dad had and it was not good. Either Brian really sucks at stapling or the stapler just sucks and I'm pretty sure the stapler just sucks. Once we had the hardware cloth in place, stapled down and cut, it was then time to flip it completely over and reassemble the garden box. Peef was there to supervise. I don't always use burlap, but when I do, I use Vigoro burlap. Now, this was probably entirely unnecessary, but we decided that we were going to put an extra layer of burlap on the bottom as well, just for a little bit extra protection for our little garden box. Because why not? And then we ended up back at the Home Depot for what felt like the 50th time. Shout out to the Collinsville Home Depot that pretty much greets us and knows who we are every single time we come in. We were there so much that Peep decided to pick up a summer job.
let's take a brief intermission to talk about plants. I said before we were super excited to buy these plants and every time we found one that looked really nice and amazing we would pick it up and we developed quite the collection of plants. Now we had these plants for several weeks before they ended up going into the ground because this whole process you're watching took way more than you know one or two days. But every single night we would carry them inside because we were afraid critters would eat them and then we would carry them back out to the deck and then carry them back in and carry them back out. You get the picture. It was super annoying. But most of them survived and they would thrive in our garden eventually. Well, maybe some of them didn't really thrive that much. But anyway, that's for a later video. All right, so it's a few days later because we've been waiting for some supplies to arrive. In the meantime, we've had some other exciting developments. Um, we received our square foot gardening book. We finished the square foot gardening class that we took online and we'll put links below to, to all that if you want to get the book or you want to check out their class. Uh, we just paid for it. We're not being paid by them to say any of this or do any of this. We just thought it was a cool thing to try and do. Um, we also, of course, have done some planning on my trusty clipboard using the little grids that they have. But what we realized, what did we realize, Brian? We had too many plants. Yes, so we got a ton of plants because we were super excited, have no idea what we were doing, but we got a ton of plants and we also kind of didn't realize like, I don't know, they have a whole method of how many plants you can put in each square and all this kind of stuff. And so now that we've actually read the stuff and know what kind of what we're doing, um, we were able to plot out our little squares and realize that we had too many plants. So we decided to expand our garden into a four by eight. Now, how did you do that, Brian? Very simply, I moved the stones that were on the top section over and then moved some pieces of wood over to fit that section. <laughs> yes, because Brian had wanted to like <clears throat> double stack everything, it actually worked out to our advantage because you only need six inches of soil yeah. uh, of the, the Mel's mix, which they, is what they call it on the square foot gardening. You only need six inches to grow most stuff. Um, and for stuff that you need 12 inches, they actually recommend growing upward with like a top hat box. So we might do that for some carrots or potatoes later. Mm -hmm. But for now, um, we are going to go ahead and get the next bed ready, put it, the staple the stuff to the bottom, line it with, hopefully we'll have enough, enough burlap. And then we've got to figure out our little slats too, because our slats aren't going to work anymore necessarily. <laughs> for the top but this is all just learning and process here um so let's show them kind of what we do and then we'll go on to the next thing okay so what's the moral of the story here brian plan before you start building yes Ah, a man and his mallet. Driving those posts in so he can have a four foot fence around his garden. So there you have it. Two four by four ish square foot gardens. And then it was time to make our Mel's Mix. Jessica, what is Mel's Mix? Mel's Mix is what they use as their soil for the garden bed. So it is a special mix, you cannot buy it, you have to make it yourself, and it is comprised of three different things. The first component is compost, and we just bought some compost um, from Home Depot. You have to make sure it is organic and has this little symbol on it and all that kind of fancy stuff. And then the next thing, which is really hard to get, is actually coarse vermiculite. I bought it from the Uline website, and I will include links to everything that we use in this video on the blog post. So if you guys want to check out any of the products, just check them out there. But this vermiculite they had was freaking amazing. Like it sparkles gold. Like it, it's just really nice vermiculite. I mean, I've never had any other vermiculite, but this one just looks really nice. Now we're going to need a tarp. So we put everything on a tarp and this is all in equal parts. And again, you can get the square foot gardening book and learn more about it. Take the course we took. Again, links will be in the blog for all this kind of stuff. But you just take a tarp and you sort of 
move it around. It works really well with two people. I was filming during this part, so Brian was kind of struggling. That's why we didn't film the rest of it, because I helped him out with it. But you just kind of like get it together. So the vermiculite and the compost go together first. And then you add the third ingredient, your peaf moss. I believe you mean peat moss. Oh yes, peat moss, that's right. So peat moss is the third ingredient that you will mix in with everything. These are all equal parts. And then you kind of smoosh your tarp together and then voila, you have Mel's Mix. Ah, uh, a man and his rake. All right, so here we are outside and we are getting the Mel's Mix together. Our hands are very dirty. I'm wearing these gloves, <laughs> which are extremely dirty. Um, and it's super humid and it's like, you can see the fog. fog. It's super freaking humid and sticky and mosquitoes are trying to kill us. So we're getting our Mel's Mix going right there, you can see. So we can actually plant stuff. Well, <laughs> it's we look late. we look psychotic. My hair is crazy. You're covered in dirt. <laughs> I'm, I'm covered, covered in, in dirt. dirt. But we got all the Mel's mix done. So tomorrow we're gonna come back and plant stuff. Yep, I can't wait. <laughs> Woo! Oh wow, I have a lot of I dirt. Know. I told you. Right. I look like I'm playing a football game. <laughs> well, folks, it's time for a recap, Jessica. All right, folks, in part one of this square foot gardening adventure, we have shown you how we built a box. We lined the bottom of the box. We reconfigured the box after we discovered that we didn't do so great on the planning process. Yes. We went to the store about 85 times. We didn't film every time, so. <laughs> we the people to... <laughs> at Home Depot know us now. <laughs> we finally switched to Lowe's because we were like, this is just embarrassing. Um, we... <laughs> uh also made the mel's mix and mm -hmm. that was super important part so we're super excited that finally now we have some mel's mix you can see it back there in our little garden sweet um and so we are ready to plant but before we plant we're gonna have to make a grid so stay tuned for part number two of this video we're gonna make the little grid because it wouldn't be called square foot gardening if you didn't have a grid oh my yeah. gosh mosquito ah! The mosquitoes um, are everywhere around uh, here. Make the grid. We're going to plan. We're going to show you our little plots of like what plants are going to go in each thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already bought a bunch, way too many plants. And we are also going to, what else are we going to do in part number two? Oh, we're going to build a fence to keep yeah. all the critters out. So stay tuned for part number two. And we can't wait to show you if we eventually get some food growing in here. Let's hope. <laughs> And thus concludes part one of the Crocs expedition into the grand world of gardening. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and click the bell next to it to get notified whenever these two lunatics post a new video. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram if you feel the need to look at them even more. But that's all I've got, and I will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Thank you.